From Sound of Hockey, it is Kraken Takeaways back for our second ever episode of whatever this thing is that we're doing. Uh, happy to be here with you all one day after game two of Seattle Kraken against the Colorado Avalanche. It's a 1-1 series, a whole new series, and the boys are coming home. Uh, pretty exciting stuff, although would have been more exciting if they had won last night, but neither here nor there. I am Darren Brown. And I'm John Barr. Nice to see you, John. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? How's doing the, all right. how's the mood? I'm doing all right. I mean, we'll get into it a bit, but I'm, yeah. the vibes are fine. You know, the vibes are fine. Excited mm-hmm. for the weekend. Um, I didn't give you a heads up that I was going to ask you about this, but I do just want to quickly ask you about this uh, situation <laughs> from last night. Uh, so we watched the game together over at your house. What's? Can you just tell me what's going on here? Is this? That's my natural habitat during uh-huh. the playoff hockey watching, particularly <laughs> when my team is uh getting out shot or there's an opportunity that was missed uh that's that's fairly normal to me you seem to hit this spot every time there was a close call for the kraken when they were about to score we're going to talk about some of those close calls that happened in this game uh in a bit so maybe save it but uh it was it would very quickly go from you're sitting on the end of the couch to jumping up because they're about to score to oh my god i'm face down on the floor and it would happen very quickly um, you're surprisingly limber when you're, when you're upset about things. So, uh, Impressive. yeah, I don't know. It's just raw. That's why I can't watch out in public. Uh, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, it was, you know, it, it was a fun game to watch again. Um, let's talk about some of our topics here. First off the Kraken, they flew out of the gates again, which surprised me. I thought after game one, when the avalanche didn't play, uh, up to their standards, I don't think, right. I really expected them to, to come out looking to make a statement early in this game. They did not. It was really the Kraken who mostly dominated that first period, jumped out to a two goal lead. And we thought at that point, man, things are, are on the rails here for, for Seattle. We're going in the right direction and we're going to come home with a, I'm, I'm speaking very much in the we as if we were the ones playing. Um, but you know, the Kraken are going to come home with a two zero lead in this series. Uh, obviously that didn't happen, but um, talk to me about that first period. I think it was a uh, pretty impressive play by Seattle there, at least for, for 20 minutes. Yeah. And I don't think you could have had a better first period for the Kraken, especially coming after the, the game one victory. You figured Colorado is going to come out hard and they did for the most part, but I don't think they were kind of at fully optimized, if you will, in the first period. And how about the the period for Yanni Gord, right? Yeah, His efforts, created the first goal uh, mm-hmm. kind of on the stretch pass to Tolvanen that led to Schultz. And then the, the, the penalty kill really just trying to kill some more time was literally kind of three on one and he yeah. chips it over to a uh, streaking in just changed on uh, Brandon Tanev who buries it. Like yeah. it was Again, it couldn't have been a better first period for for the boys. Yeah, on both of those plays, I'm glad you brought up Yanni Gord. On both of those plays, he really made the avalanche look silly. Uh, And on the first one, it was like one fell swoop. You know, the puck got rimmed around to him from uh, below the goal line. I think it was Bjorkstrand that rimmed it. He was way down by the hash marks, like just in his regular breakout spot. But in one move, he caught the puck, spun off of, I think it was a Darren Helm check, poked the puck past Devon Taves and sent Ellie Tolvanen in. And then the second one, to your point, it's really one against three. Even Nathan McKinnon is attacking him. And, you know, when you're when you're deep in the zone offensively, the, the whole point of the defense in that scenario is just to outnumber the guy who's there. They thought, oh, he's all alone by himself. But somehow with three guys surrounding him, he saw Tanev coming, set him up for, for a goal. Unfortunately, in the second period, the momentum swung the other way. Um, it seemed like the crowd really got into it after, you know, the, the team got booed off the ice in the first period, Colorado. And then in the second period, the crowd kind of got back on their side. I mean, they're always on their side, but they were pissed, right? That they didn't have their best stuff in the first period. Um, second period, you could see they looked faster. They are moving the puck better. Um, so things did change pretty quickly there. Yeah, I think that was the the wave that kind of we expected maybe from Colorado in the first period uh, that never really happened. Um, you know, you're just trying to weather those storms. That's what I that's what I think about in those situations um, and just try to minimize the damage. Right. And and unfortunately, they got two in on the crack and in a kind of a minute span, you know, but if one of those doesn't go in or, you know, there's, you know, just the, the something changes about that one minute and 
they they would have weathered the storm. What is, I think, honestly, what was nice is the momentum felt so much in Colorado's court after those two goals, like right away. And it was just, you know, you worry about it just, you know, the crack and just not being able to kind of turn it around. And to their, you know, to their benefit, they, they, they hung in there and started yeah, to yeah. kind of stay in the fight and gave themselves a chance to win in the third, really. They did. Um, it's still, I think Colorado was the better team in the third period. It seemed like there was just kind of like an onslaught there. They, they had 31 combined shots in the second and third periods Colorado did. So um, definitely the better team I thought from the 20 minute mark on, but I mean, I, you know, one thing, our next topic here is going to be splitting up McKinnon and Ronson. And, and so I think part of that is a tactical change by Jared Bednar uh, to help them play better through the second period on. But I also just wonder how much of that was just a happenstance of the game, right? They did get that goal off a deflection from Lekkonen in the second period. And that was when all of a sudden it was like, whoa, whoa, we, these guys are unstoppable all of a sudden. Um, and so I, I wonder how much of it was tactical um, and how much of it was just the atmosphere of the arena really picked up in that second period. And the Avalanche players might have fed off of it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think they, they you know, they get that confidence and they get they're like, okay, we're in this and they get a little bit more jacked up to, to play hard. But to your point about McKinnon and Ranton and splitting up, that was, that was a change from game one um, and a change from the season. And honestly, you know, I think both team both players were noticeable out there, but I don't think they had the grade a chances that sometimes we've come to expect. Yeah. Um, and, and we didn't see that really in game in game one either. I think we talked about McKinnon having a ton of shots in the last game and Ranton and had a goal in the, in the, in game one. But again, you just try to limit the quality of their, their opportunities. And I think the Kraken have done a relatively good job limiting that. And McCar you can throw McCar in there as well, where McCar did have a primary assist on the Lakenin goal, but um, he's not, that's not how he really does damage. He does damage by dancing, making moves and getting shots up and close for defensemen. So I, I think, I think they've been playing them well. And I definitely think Bednar kind of is trying to shift things up from game one and, and, and it probably played out pretty yeah, well. And I, him. I almost feel like he's trying to counter what the Kraken have, you know, it's almost like he saw yeah. in game one, okay, we're really top heavy and it's easy for us, for the Kraken to shut us down we now I'm talking from the point of view of the, we, 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 yeah. we, right. So, <laughs> but it, it's, it became pretty obvious that if Seattle, and we knew this coming in, if Seattle can effectively check McKinnon, McCarr, Ronson, and uh, I guess to some, some, some degree, Devon Taves, who also scored a goal last night. Yeah. If you can effectively check those guys, there's not much else in this roster anymore. You know, they're not as deep as they were last year. I think that's absolutely true. And Seattle is very deep. They can roll those lines. So um, it almost felt like it was a counter move for what Seattle had, um, which I thought was interesting. That, we do need to talk. Yeah. yeah. We do need to talk about the kiss heard around the world from, uh, from Brandon Tanev um, very briefly. It was just a funny, funny moment. He scored that goal. Um, go check out our Twitter. We had a pretty great uh, gif angle, which actually came from the Colorado broadcast where he's down on the ice pops up almost like he's a Jack in the box and blows a kiss to the fans in the in the first row, which was hilarious. Uh, Kate Shefty asked him about it after the game, and she's like, "Were you responding to anything?" And he just said, "No." <laughs> so he wasn't yeah. wasn't interested in in really talking about what that was uh, all about. Uh, the outcome, or we might have heard a little bit more if if the Kraken were victorious last right. night. But yeah. um, he clearly was just not in the not really in the mood. He, you know, he did his duty. He talked to the press and everything, but I don't think he wanted to talk about it after the loss. No. And unfortunately, it's one of those things that if they had gone on to win that game, it would have been like an all time moment that yeah. we never would have forgotten. Uh, but they lost the game. So it probably will ease off a little bit as we move forward here. But uh, man, what a funny moment that was. Uh, we also need to talk about Gru again. Uh, he played very well. They, he gets a loss for this one, obviously three to two, but I mean, he stopped 38 saves last night and looked really, really sharp for the second game in a row here uh, against his old team. So I don't know. There's too much more we need to say because we touched on it last, uh, last game and last episode of this, but um, he's looking sharp. And I think that's a really, really good sign for the Seattle crack. Well, and I think we, we were leading up to the postseason. We were kind of talking about like Grubauer is going to need to, be the goalie of record if if 
Seattle's to have a chance and, and he's given him a chance. Right. So I, I think he's been playing great. I think uh, you keep rolling with him. Obviously. I, I don't think there's any change there. Yeah. Final topic. Here we go. They're coming home. The boys are coming home for game three. It's, it's tied one-to-one. You know, the thing is, I, I think people were, were pretty devastated last night to see Seattle lose, especially after they were up 2-0. But man, there's a lot of positives to take from that game. And I know I'm always an optimist, but if you turn back the clock by a week and say, yeah, the Kraken are definitely going to come home tied one to one, but didn't tell us how it happened. We would have been very happy about that. Right. Uh, Instead, they won game one, lost game two. And so I think that put a little bit of a negative, like recency bias taste in people's mouths. But man, you got to feel good about the way that they're that they're playing right now. They could they could have won that game. They really could have. Um, they're getting goaltending. They're getting depth scoring. They've proven that they can skate right with the defending champions in their building, right? So now you give us the Seattle us. Now you give Seattle <laughs> the matchup benefits, and that could be a huge advantage too. So um, I just I cannot wait to see what the atmosphere is like in Clamp Pledge Arena on Saturday. Um, it is going to be rocking and incredibly fun. I'm very excited. About I, it. I'm getting tense. Just, just yeah. thinking about it right now. You're making me think about it. Sorry, I'm like, sorry. I'm like squeezing my, you know, like, oh my gosh, this is going to be insane. Your butt cheeks. Uh, I wouldn't say my butt cheeks. I would say, <laughs> I'd say my, my chest. I'm just kind of like amped up right now. You're, all right. I got you. But, gotcha. you know, it's funny leading up to getting the franchise. I always talked about how incredible it would be to get the century link crowd that we've come to expect at Seahawks games inside. Mm-hmm. You mean Lumen arena. Field? Lumen. Is it Lumen Field now? Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I, I just can't wait to see that. Um, that atmosphere is going to be insane. And we saw that kind of leading up to the playoffs too, right? To In the last couple of games of the, se- the season at home where we're rowdier than, than normal. And so I think Saturday is just going to be insane. Yeah. You know, uh, last thing I wanted to just touch on really quickly. uh, We heard from someone inside the organization that the players, uh, we've talked about this on the Sound of Hockey podcast, that fans need to pick a lane during the national anthem between uh, just shouting C and shouting red glare. We heard from someone inside the organization that the players want the fans shouting C. So, oh, say, oh, say, can you see? Everyone hit it. So let's all get on that that bandwagon here for um, for these. Yeah, playoffs. let it let it out. Because if yes. you watch like Dallas Stars games, they do the Stars. If you do Vegas Golden Knights, they do the Knights. And it is loud, loud, loud. Yell it. Let's go. Yes. And we just the thing is, we said on the podcast months ago, we need to pick a lane. We're we're helping you pick a lane right now. Yeah. The Seattle Kraken players are helping you pick a lane. Oh, say, can you see at the top of your line? See, see, the see, the see part. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this has been fun again. Uh, as, as we said before, leave your comments. Uh, let us know if you like this. Make sure you subscribe to the Sound of Hockey channel because we're not going to post these every time on the website. So um, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments, and we'll talk to you all very soon. Cheers.